I just kind of want to just go into it um, briefly but quickly and kind of let you know where you stand as far as in the business. You just did 60% of your job would be developing and, and creating the app. Now the other 40% is going out to show it to your business owners so that you can market it. That's the most important thing that I do. After the app is developed, usually what we'll do first is go out and make contact with the business. Sometimes they contact you, sometimes you'll go out and contact them. After the contact is made, you wanna give them something to look at. Of course, you have examples of other businesses and you have examples of your other projects that you've completed, but this specifically is usually you're gonna pull the information from their website, you're gonna develop the app as a preview, then you go back and you show that to them. And, and that's basically how you close, that's how you get your money, that's how you're compensated for in the mobile app business. So from there, once they decide they're gonna, now the thing about it is you're creating something for people who really don't understand what we do. So the first thing you have to do is create a, awareness of what, it, what a mobile app is and how we can help them in their business. That's the first thing is, is creating awareness. The second thing you want to do is add value. Yes, you have a website, but how hard or easy is it to go to your website on my phone or on my tablet? Because that's where everyone is going. So if the customer base is specifically, and we have over um, the statistics show that um, mobile app development and mobile app sales have increased by 1,000% and will increase by an additional, by 2015, it's, it's stated that everyone will have some type of mobile device if they don't already. And that means even in schools, um, Moss Middle School, they don't even do books anymore. Now they have tablets. And if the children don't have their own, the per parents don't purchase it, the school will actually check them out. So that's where we're going. So that's the first thing you want to do is let the business know what it is that you're doing and why this is important. Because the first question they're going to ask is, why do I need a mobile app? It just sounds like you want to sell me something. Well, because I want to uh, introduce you to a whole new market that you don't have access to at this moment. And that goes across every, we have 30 different websites that we actually market to businesses from churches to restaurants to attorneys. I mean, there's, there's not a business that you won't be able to market to with your trade. And that's the most important thing. So I want to give you a little background, but then I also want to bring you back up. So if you have any questions, um, we can just go through it. But the most important thing is going to be your, your um, creating awareness of what you do. That's everywhere you go, even while you're still a student. Let people know, oh, I build mobile apps. Because no matter where you decide or where you land, where you decide to go, if you want to be self-employed or if you want to work as a developer, you still want people to know what you do. So once you've established that and you know where you're going to be, now let's talk about how we can turn this into fun. So usually app sales right now and the way we sell are ranging a minimum is 1500 and they go up from there. So of that, 60% goes to the developer. So that's how you can range your pay. Everyone is different. You can say, well, I want to make $50 an hour. We'll quantify that. We just basically built the app in an hour. You think you're worth more than $50? Yes, no, maybe. I think I'm worth more than $50. So, so, so it may not be to your advantage to go buy an hour. You may go buy the job. And so going in as an employee or as an employer, you have to quantify your time and say, okay, how much is this worth what I just did? Um, usually they have different programs, depending on where you land, they have different programs where some of them you're gonna go in and you're gonna do it exactly like this. Some of them you're gonna actually go in and you're, and it, you're gonna have to do it, I mean literally X, Y, Z code. Literally the code, everyone knows iOS, right? Or the example of, it's the way, okay. So it depends on another thing, what certification that you get how far you decide you want to go in the program. But either way, once you get there, now let's talk about marketing the apps. My suggestion, what we do, is we actually put together just a presentation manual of what we do and the products that we offer. And I don't hand this to the business to keep, I show it to them while I'm there, and then I give them my card, and they're more than welcome to go to the website and see everything that we've done. It's in our portfolio. That's something that you want to consider. This is gonna be your business calling card. Every, pers every person that you see, every business that you sit down with, you wanna have something to show them your work. If you don't have work yet, then that's why you can go with a company who's already doing this, because now their portfolio becomes your portfolio. Does that make sense? 
so that you, even though you're a new developer, they already have all of these products that they've already done. It's just like if you go and work for Walmart. Well, since they already sell the products, you're just going in as one of the employees and now you're a part of a, a corporate team. So that's the same thing with your apps. Then from there, I like to keep this with me. This is gonna be your calendar. So that you won't overbook yourself. I know we have it on our phones and, and we're app developers, and but not, uh, your, what if your phone doesn't come on? What if you double book, your, what, whatever the case, things happen, life happens. So I keep my handheld <laughs> appointment book and I make sure that every appointment I have, I write it down in here and I put it in my phone just to be safe, a situation like this. Someone may want to meet with me. I don't have my phone, this is a business meeting. So I, but I do have my appointment book. This was a dollar at Dollar Tree. I definitely suggest you get one because everywhere you go is an opportunity for you to market yourself. And as a business professional, if you're not um, a people person and you do not have a desire to be out in front of people, then you need a me in your life, in your business. <laughs> if you're gonna be self-employed, you need a me. You need someone that is bubbly and excited and can go out and sell your product for you. Um, you can put them on a commission basis, you can you know, work something out. It could be your wife, significant other, sister, brother, someone in your life that you know, if you're gonna go self-employed, if you're gonna go that route and you're gonna be an independent. Because even though it's such a great need for what we do, the first thing we have to do is create awareness unless they're calling you. And when you first come out, if you go self-employed, they may not call you because they don't know that you exist. Now that you see on uh, the commercials, the biggest ones that are really starting to advertise their mobile apps are retailers and the big box insurance companies, State Farm, Geico. They're really starting to push it. And so as you see the big box companies do it, then it's gonna trickle down to the little ones. So if you see that State Farm has an app, then you wanna go talk to your local farmer's agent. Well, you know State Farm has an app. Have you thought about getting an app? Because it's already, an, it's becoming an industry standard. So that's a huge market that you want to capitalize on now that you are going into a, either a new career or expounding upon your current because the, it's, not a, it's not a good thing to do to get a degree in something that you don't have any clientele. I mean, it, that's the whole reason why we're here, right? We wanna be able to add something to our resume and repertoire so that we can be able to um, benefit ourselves financially, right? Yes? I hope so. Am I here? <laughs> okay. That's the most important thing. So as a business professional, I want you to know the things coming straight out of school, or even while you're still in school, that you can do to quantify yourself in the business world. Because if you pull up the Chamber of Commerce, I can promise you out of 160 businesses, only 3% of them have mobile apps. I know, because that's my market. <laughs> so going to networking events, doing internships, we're always looking for interns. I I'll take you under my wing, you can go out with me. Every appointment that I go on, you can go with me. You can listen to the verbiage. It's not gonna be the same. The way I talk to a church is completely different than the way I talk to a restaurant. And so is the price point. Most churches, you're gonna build the app one time. You may have to go in and do some things, but they usually have a multimedia ministry that's going to do those things for you. So you'll work with them, teach them the basics, and then you're done. You're compensated and you're done. If they have any upgrades, then that's a charge, but that's letting them know up front. Okay, now with a restaurant, that is a daily change because their menu changes daily, their specials change daily. So that's a huge market of compensation for you. And you're gonna keep them as a client and retain them longer because as their menu increases, so does their app. Does that make sense? And a lot of businesses are going away from the websites for ordering because they take too long. You go to the website, you place your order, then you have to email it. That means I have to have someone in my restaurant sitting at the computer, watching the computer for emails coming in. You get to the restaurant thinking your order is ready, but you didn't call, so no one is expecting it. So now they have to go pull up the order on the email, and I know this for a fact because Wingstop, every time I ask them about their app, which they do have, don't do the app, just come in or call us. This is the employees. So from a corporate level, when things are done from a corporate level, by the time they trickle down to the actual storefront, it's completely different because of the training. You're training someone in an office who's gonna set this up for people that are frying chicken, literally. 
So you think, keep that in mind when you're dealing with corporate offices. I even ask them, okay, who's going to train the employees how to use this? Oh, well, the managers. Okay. Oh. <laughs> who's going to train the employees how to use this? Because if you know business, you know most of the managers are, are, are paper pushers, if you will. It's the actual employees that are actually utilizing all of these things and great devices that we put in place. So the last thing you want to do is go through all of this work to build a mobile app that will never be used. And when you go to collect your monthly fee, if you decide to do that, oh, we decided we don't need it anymore. We're going to put it in our 30-day notice. We want to cancel. They're not canceling because it wasn't a benefit. They're canceling because they weren't trained properly in the beginning, and it's too much of a hassle now. So you want to overcome that objection as an objective in the beginning. That way you won't have to worry about cancellations. And speaking of which, that's another form. You have six different points of, of revenue that you can bring through your mobile app, depending on how you decide to go. You, you can actually, like something that we do uh, for uh, cities, we actually build an app for the city at no cost. We charge them a monthly fee, and then that gives us the right to sell advertising inside the app. So that's a huge revenue stream for you, because if you're building an app for the city of Salina, and they have 100,000, well, not them, let's say 5,000. They have 5,000 hits a month. Then you think about, okay, how can this benefit a local business? So if, if I know that there's 5,000 people in my city going to this one app, as a pizza place, I probably want to be on that, right? Because those people are going to at least know that my company now exists. So for the smaller companies who don't see the value specifically in purchasing a mobile app, you still have another opportunity to market to them and actually utilize their advertising dollars. Because no matter what they say, every business has a budget for advertising. You just want to create the value so that they will want to include you in those dollars. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for me? We good? Well, if there's no questions, I just kind of wanted to give you a, a rundown. Yes, sir? Okay, well, the first one is going to be your ad sales. The second one is going to be, you can actually, through your previewer, you can actually build a mobile. It's actually a website, but it's through the mobile app. So that's something else you can do, the app itself. And then uh, the fourth thing is going to be banner ads. You can sell banner ads if a business is, well, no, I, I know that I'm not paying up front, but I don't want all those people in my, okay, well, we don't have to do ads, but we can at least do a banner. And that'll be one. Whereas on the advertising, you may be able to get up to 20 businesses, depending on how you place them and if you're going to do links to their website or just the name and phone number. But on a banner, it may be one or two per page. So then you can charge more for that banner. So going back to the insurance agency, well, you may have a car dealership that you can put a banner for $600 a month. Well, if that um, specific business is getting out, uh, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 downloads a month, because it's, it's a local entity like a chamber of commerce or something like that, well, then it will be a benefit to pay that much because that's 100,000 opportunities for that one dealership to be seen. Or real estate agents, they love it too. And so that's another, a whole different market. So each market that you tap into has a different opportunity for you to go out and sell on behalf of that business. If you build an app for an advertising agency, well, then all of their clients are going to have access to that app. So every time you build an app, you just don't want to limit yourself to just the app sales. And then the sixth, most importantly, is, key, is retaining them as a customer and charging them on a monthly basis, a monthly fee. That monthly fee could include um, changes. You know, when you get to uploading it to the Android and the Apple markets, you actually have to pay a fee every time there's a change. So you incorporate that fee. Say, for instance, the, the charge is $25. Well, then you may say for $75 a month, I'll go ahead and once a month, we'll go ahead and do your changes. Well, that's a $50 revenue for you. Okay, multiply that by 10. That's $500 just off of their changes. And you're going to do it once a month, so you're only going to pay that one time. And that's if they make changes or not. And that's if they make changes or not, because you've already calculated it. So some months they may not have changes. That's why, you know, I mentioned churches, because they hardly ever, all they want to do is have a presence. And then if the multimedia, if they do have a media department, then they're going to go in and upload the sermons, and they're going to do all that so you don't have to. So that, that's just an example. But this is very important. Once you get your certification or your degree and you're complete and now you graduate, you don't have to wait until then. You can actually start interviewing with um, companies 
now <coughs> so that you can see because you're a rare commodity. There's not too many people that can do what you do. So if you think um, there's 100 million businesses in the United States that can benefit from what you do, now you decide, do I want to be compensated on an hourly, on a daily? Do I want to write my own paycheck? Do I want to start out with a company and work my way out to working on my own? Just like real estate agents. They may start out with a Coldwell banker, but you know how much it costs to get in with them? That's several thousands of dollars because they're a big box agency. Then you have the phantom agents where um, you have your broker, but you do everything on your own and you just pay them a flat fee. They give you no leads, no advertising, nothing. Only thing that you do is hang your license with them until you've been an agent for four years. Well, those are the type of things that you're, um, you guys can consider. You, you need to consider which direction do you want to go do you want to be an employee or an employer? And then that being said, you give back. You come back and you d develop a relationship with the college and you have a, interns like yourselves come in and then they can help you to build your business as well because they need the hours. You can do an internship that's 320 hours and then you'll get a signature. And that's basically the greatest thing you can get for on-the-job training because that's the one thing that's hurting us as businesses and you guys as students is bridging that gap. Most companies will not hire you even with a degree because you don't have experience. But how are you ever going to get experience if someone doesn't hire you? That's where the internships come in. So it's a benefit to you now and it's a benefit to them later, the new students that you're gonna bring into your company. And, and that's the greatest thing about it. This can be, I know there's, there's no floor, but there's also no ceiling. So as much as you wanna make, as much as you wanna be able to do, you can do it through this forum properly put together. You have to have your plan put together. If you, if you don't build a website, you should gather someone that does because that's another thing. Who are you? You're coming in my business. You want me to spend upwards of $2,000 with you. I don't know who you are. You're not a member of the chamber. Okay, so you graduated from Collins. So did 15,000 other students. Why should I do business with you? That's where your website comes in. That's where you're, you don't have to be a member of the Better Business Bureau, just be listed. It's free to be listed. Um, with the Chamber of Commerce, it may cost you $60 a month to join the Frisco Chamber. It's worth it. You need that credibility. You need, you need those um, relationships. Um, work with, you know, even working with us. We, we do a lot of things. We're connected with a lot of different organizations and we built thousands of apps over the course of, of our company in existence. So that's something else. You can say, well, I did my internship with My Pocket Business or My Pocket HOA or we'll get into that later. It's another conference. All the other things that we do. But the basis point is, is just make sure that you have a presence yourself. You quantify exactly how much you're looking. I mean, because this is a business or this could be a career. However you decide, make sure that you quantify yourself and don't sell yourself short. You guys are worth more than $50 an hour no matter what they tell you. Well, we're gonna start you out because you just graduated. No, 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 I'm fresh. I should be started out higher because I just graduated. And that's the thing, and that's how you have to look at it. Technology is constantly changing, and you wanna stay with that. Even after you graduate and you've completed the program, you still wanna come back and keep these ongoing classes. Stay in contact with the college, as I do. I mean, I still come back and I still do continuing education, even though I'm out there. But that's a way that I can hone in my skills and make sure that I'm learning and I'm cutting edge just like the technology is. All right, any questions there? Where, where are you located? We are located in McKinney and I have cards for everyone. Like I said, I love, love, right, oh, yes. I love, love, love to assist you in any way that I can. Thanks. Mm -hmm.